welcome uh, back to the third lecture of noise so in this lecture uh, we'll discuss uh, noise in mosfets in the previous two lectures we discussed about noise in a resistor and that noise is thermal noise similarly uh, in mosfet uh, first we'll be discussing about thermal noise which is basically due to the uh, motion of electrons or current flow through the channel current flow in the channel so we uh, so this random motion of electrons uh, through the channel uh, that depends on temperature so as temperature varies uh, there is fluctuation uh, that leads to noise uh, so uh, as we know a mosfet nominal current which is id current which is a function of vgs and vds which is expected or predicted by a square law which is id is a function of vgs and vds but what we can uh, write here is uh, along with this current uh, we can expect a small noisy component here now uh, to study the noise in mosfet uh, and again that noise is due to the current flow in the channel which is created by the applied voltage we'll um, uh, study the noise uh, in terms uh, by looking at the different regions of operation so regions of mosfet so the first region is cutoff region uh, since the current flow uh, in cutoff region is zero even uh, we are not expecting any noise because in the absence of channel there is no current flow so there is no noise component for the current so uh, we can write the uh, noise spectral density uh, SI of F current noise spectral density SI of F as 0 in cutoff region. Now uh, second is linear region and in linear region we know that MOSFET is acting as a resistor. Uh, since the same principle what we learned in resistor no thermal noise can be extended over here. In that case SI of F uh, for um, MOSFET operating in linear region can be written as 4KT by R where R is the resistance of the MOSFET and we know that the R, uh, the R of the MOSFET, the MOSFET resistance can be written as 1 by uh, mu and C ox W by L VGS minus VT. Uh, similarly, the third region which is saturation region. Uh, in saturation region, we know that MOSFET is acting as a current source. Uh, so the current through MOSFET or the, uh, the noise uh, can be modeled as uh, a current source here it's not clear yeah the current through MOSFET can be uh, modeled as uh, sorry the noise in the MOSFET can be modeled as a current source between uh, drain and source and that can be written as I n square bar and the value or the noise spectral density is equal to it is given by uh, the formula 8 kT by so given as 4 kT gamma into gm uh, where this gamma is a constant whose value is 2 by 3 so when I substitute that I'll get 8 kT by 3 into gm as the uh, current noise spectral density uh, of MOSFET in saturation region uh, so if you look at the uh, noise spectral density in saturation region uh, if you plot a noise spectral density is a constant value and that value is given by 8 kT by 3 into G. Same is the case in linear region also. Right. So uh, in MOSFET depending on the region of operation uh, we can uh, quantify noise. In linear uh, same as the resistor in saturation it turns out that the formula is 4 kT gamma into GM but the value of gamma is 2 by 3. <laughs> Now one important point to uh, note here is uh, the noise contributed by different transistors are, are uncorrelated therefore the effect of noise sources can be found separately and all uh, can be added. So when we solve problems um, uh, we can apply this uh, because the noise contribution of different transistors are uh, uncorrelated. So we can uh, find them separately and we can add, add all of them. So this we will uh, see when we solve the tutorial problems. Now, um, 
this is all about uh, thermal noise in MOSFET and the uh, the units here are since it is current uh, noise per kilo density it is amp, amp square per hertz here also it is amp square per hertz uh, please note down these formulas uh, now uh, there is one more noise uh, in MOSFET mm -hmm. that is known as uh, flicker noise flicker noise and uh, that is basically uh, that comes from the structure so if you look at the uh, structure of a cross section of a MOSFET uh, you can find a P type or N type substrate uh, so I'm just I'm uh, taking a P type substrate upon that uh, there is a there will be a silicon uh, dioxide SiO2 layer and on the top of that uh, there will be a metal layer right so here we have source and drain regions as such now uh, <clears throat> uh, here if you see uh, this material p type substrate uh, if i'm considering silicon material here we have silicon atoms and in this area you have silicon dioxide atoms so uh, you can uh, clearly see an interface here at this interface that interface is uh, actually silicon dioxide silicon interface so in this oxide silicon interface <clears throat> there will be the uh, presence of dangling bones dangling bones are actually weak bones uh, present at the oxide silicon interface so there will be the presence of this dangling bones uh, and these bones actually uh, give rise to extra energy states so whenever Mm, there are bones that gives extra energy states and what will happen here is as the carriers move from so when we apply a potential uh, current uh, will flow from uh, source to drain and as the carriers move from source to drain uh, through this channel the dangling bones the the energy states present in the silicon silicon dioxide interface will randomly trap so will randomly uh, trap the carriers moving carriers moving through the uh, channel so what is happening here is <clears throat> the flicker noise basically uh, comes from the silicon dioxide silicon interface so uh, here if you look at the structure of MOSFET in p-type substrate you have silicon atoms and here you have silicon dioxide so definitely you can expect a silicon silicon dioxide interface here and at the interface there will be the presence of uh, dangling bones which are weak bones and that give rise to some extra energy states and now when carriers flow through this channel uh, these carriers are randomly trapped in this uh, extra energy states and they were later released they are randomly trapped first randomly trapped and later they are released so this uh, random trapping and releasing of electrons uh, in the drain uh, as the carriers flow through this um, channel give rise to flicker noise so uh, that is all about flicker noise uh, that the so one thing what we can say is uh, this depends on the flicker noise depends on actually the cleanliness of oxide uh, silicon interface so if the interface is clean uh, that can make sure that um, dangling the presence of dangling bones will be minimum and in, in that case uh, there will be no energy states and there will be no trapping of electrons uh, but if there are energy states uh, electrons will be trapped and released randomly that give rise to flicker noise now it turns out that this flicker noise uh, can be uh, modeled it is quantified and it is expressed as uh, in terms of voltage vn square 1 by f so flicker noise is otherwise known as 1 by f noise uh, by since it it depends on it is inversely related to the frequency so i <clears throat> thermal noise we expressed in terms of current uh, flicker noise is basically modeled in uh, terms of voltage Vn square 1 by f and it is given as uh, k by wlc ox 
into 1 by f. Where k is a constant, uh, we call it as a flicker noise coefficient. K is a uh, k value or k is known as a flicker noise coefficient. K is known as flicker noise coefficient. Uh, w and L are the uh, width and length or WL together is area of the MOSFET. C ox is oxide capacitance and F is actually uh, frequency. Now, uh, one way to reduce flicker noise is uh, to increase area. So, if you can increase the area of MOSFET, uh, by increasing the area of MOSFET, actually flicker noise can be reduced. Yeah, And this flicker noise is modeled as a voltage source uh, which is in series with the uh, gate it is vn square 1 by f which is modeled as a voltage source in series with the gate now uh, if i want to find the total noise component uh, in a mosfet i should add uh, the thermal noise component uh, which we have discussed here which uh, which is written in terms of uh, current uh, spectral density current uh, spectral density si of f now if i want to write the average uh, power so we know that i n square bar is equal to uh, si of f by delta f right sorry uh, sorry si of f uh, the power spectral density is i n square bar by delta f so if you want to write i n square bar from here, I can write i n square bar as S i of into delta f and if it is measured at unit hertz bandwidth, the value is 8 k t by 3 into g m. Similarly, if you want to write uh, flicker noise in terms of current, we can write it as i n 1 by f square bar as g m square into uh, v n 1 by f square bar, the same relation. Uh, since noise is a small signal, the same relation we can extend here id equal to gm into vgs in a similar way i n square bar can be obtained as gm square into uh, vn 1 by f square. Uh, so from that you can get the value of i n square bar. Now if you look at the characteristics of uh, flicker noise, uh, it is actually inversely related to frequency. So if I write log f and yes i of f. Uh, you will get uh, Kara something like this, which is uh, shows that it is inversely uh, related. And uh, by looking at the Kara, it is evident that uh, flicker noise is uh, dominant at lower frequency. Is dominant at lower frequency. And thermal noise is actually constant for all frequency. So uh, we can um, see that thermal noise will be more uh, evident or more dominant uh, when it comes for higher frequency because lower frequency flicker noise is a uh, dominant component. So at this point you can have a comparative study of flicker noise and uh, thermal noise. So if you look at the major points uh, for thermal and flicker, uh, you can say that thermal noise is a white noise where uh, PSD is constant. Uh, with frequency and it depends on temperature actually but flicker noise depends on cleanness of oxide or uh, cleanness of fabrication where PSD is inversely related to frequency so you can have this comparative study and uh, again flicker noise is dominant at lower frequency where thermal noise is uh, dominant at higher frequency. So it is constant actually, it is constant uh, across the frequency that we have already discussed here. Right. So uh, understand uh, thermal noise and flicker noise of MOSFET. Uh, we will solve uh, tutorial questions in our next video. Thank you.